Okay, so in this video, we are going to go over uh, spin transitions, spin allowed transitions in the D7 Tanabe Sugano diagram. So um, for this diagram, you're going to want to use it if you have a D7 octahedral complex or you have a D10 minus 7, a D3 tetrahedral complex. And so first it's useful to go over um, what the axes mean on these diagrams. The one on the left here um, is the energy of the transition. This is in units of B. So you can see it's E divided by B. B is uh, the Rockoff parameter, which is a measure of electron-electron repulsion. It's gonna be different for different transition metal cations. And this is unitless because um, we're basically dividing two energies by one another. And so you can think about this you know, if you have a value of 40 here, it's saying we're 40 times more energetic than B. Um, if we have a value of zero, uh, we uh, are at the ground state. And these are all then uh, excited energies relative to the ground state. Same sort of units with uh, delta on the x-axis. Delta is a measure of the um, T2G to EG gap in octahedral complexes or the uh, T2, uh, e to T2 gap in tetrahedral complexes. This is a generic diagram that can be used for octahedral or tetrahedral complexes, right? D7 octahedral or D3 tetrahedral. When we're at zero on the x-axis, that means we have uh, no ligands. Uh, and so we're in spherical symmetry. This is like a transition metal cation just by itself with no ligands. And so you can see we have these letters like the ground state is a quartet F, there's an excited state quartet P. We call those the free ion terms. But once we have some ligands, we descend into octahedral or tetrahedral symmetry. And now our ground state is quartet T1. And on this side where we have relatively low values left of this line, we are um, talking about high spin complexes. This line is called the spin crossover point. Um, and once we're at stronger field ligands, we are going to be a different ground state, um, in this case, doublet E. And so this is the low spin side of the diagram. And so low spin side of the diagram is when we have strong field ligands, things like um, cyanide and carbon monoxide are examples. High spin is when we have uh, weak field ligands, things like halides and usually water, weak field ligands, ligands. Okay, so um, first thing I wanna do is uh, we're gonna talk about on this slide, just the high spin side of the diagram. And then on the next slide, we'll go into the low spin. So if you have a high spin D7 octahedral or high spin D3 tetrahedral, you're gonna be on this side of the diagram, left to the left of this um, spin crossover vertical line. So let's talk about this uh, quartet T1 state. Why is it a quartet T1 state? Well, um, we know <clears throat> that in octahedral symmetry, we have uh, a splitting that looks like this, where this is delta O, and this is, these are our low line three T2Gs, and we have two higher line EGs. And if we're D7 high spin, we're gonna populate as such one, two, three, and then four, five, our fourth and our fifth electron are gonna go into that higher energy state because this gap is relatively small. So we're gonna try to avoid electron-electron repulsion. We have to do some electron-electron repulsion here for the uh, sixth and the seventh electron. And we have spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down. So those spins cancel each other. But here we have three unpaired electrons, spin up, spin up, spin up. That is gonna be, each is worth one half. Um, and so we have, three unpaired electrons, so that's worth three halves. So in our 2s plus one, to figure out the spin multiplicity, we do two times three halves plus one, that gets us four, explaining why we have a quartet here. Similar thing when we do uh, the tetrahedral side of things, now we have what we call delta T, and we have our E's, on the bottom and our T2s, it's sort of flipped. We drop the Gs because there's no inversion um, operation in tetrahedral. Remember G is part of the Mulliken symbol. That means you're symmetric with respect to inversion operation. So if we don't have inversion um, <clears throat> in tetrahedral, 
then we don't have G's in the, or U's on Garadas in the Mulliken symbol. So we get rid of those and we have D3 high spin. So we're gonna do one, two, and we're high spin. So we don't pair. Again, we have three unpaired electrons. So we're gonna have three halves. Um, so two times three halves plus one. Again, we're gonna get a quartet. So the same ground state applies. It's part of the reason why this diagram works for, for both of these two cases. Okay, so now um, we can write down our ground state. Our ground state for the octahedral is four quartet T1G. Again, we write the G because um, we're an octahedral and we're just getting this value from down here. It's this bottom line here uh, that we're talking about. You can imagine there's a bottom line here for all the weak, uh, weak field side, the high spin side of this diagram. This is the ground state. Later on, uh, when we get to the low spin side on the next slide, this is an excited state, okay? So it changes. <clears throat> but the ground state here for tetrahedral is 4T1. We don't put the Gs for reasons we just talked about. We're always going to drop the Gs when we're talking about tetrahedral. Now, spin allowed, spin allowed transitions. Those are going to be transitions um, that are high in intensity, so they're going to show up in our UV biz spectrum. And they're going to be ones where we preserve the spin. So from growing from the ground state to the excited state, we're going to stay a quartet. <clears throat> so we have to look for other quartets in this diagram. And we see a quartet um, right here, quartet T2. So that's going to be our first excited state. So we can write down the transition is going to be for the octahedral case. Going from quartet T1G, that's our ground state, to our excited state, quartet T2G. And for our tetrahedral case, we just have the same thing, but we drop the Gs. All right. What's going to be our next transition? Do we have any others? Well, we have to look for quartets. And don't get confused here. You'll see another quartet here. But this quartet, if we trace it back, is the same quartet as we had before, we're just, they're just labeling it for you on the other side. So you have to pay attention to the labeling system. It could vary depending upon what Tanabe Sukana diagram you pull up. However, we see another quartet here. So that's a spin allowed state because we're going from quartet to quartet. And again, we have to trace this back and see where it comes in. And we see it's that line. And it always should trace back to a free ion term with the same spin. So this quartet T1 came from a quartet P free ion. So we know that's good. This quartet T2 came from a uh, quartet F, okay? But anyway, um, we can have a spin allowed transition. We have a spin allowed transition from the quartet T1G ground state to that green quartet T1G excited state. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, well, aren't these the same? They have the same name. Well, it just means they have the same symmetry. Right, so no, they have different energies and electron candidate excited there. We just unfortunately don't have a way of distinguishing between the two names with this system, okay? It, it corresponds to different um, arrangements, different microstates of electrons, but uh, with, with these diagrams, they, they look the same, but nope, this is a higher lying quartet T1G. So this indeed is a transition. The second, it's gonna be higher in energy, so it's gonna appear at lower wavelength or higher wave number, talking the energy units, than the red transition. In tetrahedral, it's gonna be quartet T1 to quartet T1. Let me just drop the Gs. Any other quartets do we see? And yes, we have another quartet up here. It's a quartet A2. And again, we wanna be careful here and make sure we're tracing this line back to the correct point. And you know you can see there's some changing of energy, the blue and the green cross. Um, but at this position, if we have this strength of ligand, ligand's worth one B, um, it's actually gonna be in between that of energy of the green and the red. But it is a third uh, trans spin allowed transition. Of course, if we're at higher ligand field strengths here, you know, this blue transition will actually be higher in energy than the green transition. So the ordering of the peaks in your UV spectrum can switch depending upon, you know, the strength of your ligand. So we're going to have a quartet T1G ground state here. 
and we're going to a quartet A2G excited state. And same thing for our tetrahedral case, but we drop the Gs. So this state, uh, uh, at this point, we have identified all of our spin allowed transitions. Um, and again, you know, something to, to not make the mistake of, <clears throat> you might look over here and say, well, what about this quartet? Uh, uh, what about this quartet T1, right? No, this is came from this T1. So it's not, there's no, uh, you can't just, I, I would get in the habit of drawing arrows like this on your diagram versus uh, just counting what you see on, on the right side here, that's gonna more often than not give you the wrong answer, right? Because this quartet T1, remember, came from, is the same thing as this quartet T1 here. It's the same line. The line went across here and then up. So don't make that mistake. Um, this is just now the ex an excited state when you're on the low spin side of the diagram, but we're talking about the high spin side of the diagram. The problem, you know, we're presuming the problem is talking about high spin. So anyway, we have uh, one, two, three spin allowed transitions. So three spin allowed transitions. What is that gonna uh, tell us? We're gonna have three main peaks in our UV vis spectrum. Will all these peaks appear on the spectrum? Depends upon, you know, if they're in the right energy that's accessible by a typical UV vis uh, 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 spectrometer, but they're there somewhere. You might not see them experimentally necessarily. All right, so um, now let's go to uh, low spin. So I'm just gonna rename these diagrams here, uh, relabel these low spin. And move this over so I don't block our molecular term symbols there. <clears throat> so now we're gonna be talking about low spin complexes. And again, this is a D7 applicable for D7 octahedral or D3 tetrahedral complexes. So um, just like we did last time, let's think about now why it's a doublet, okay? Um, last time we thought about why the ground state was a quartet. So we have our uh, T2G to EG. We have our delta O given by the gap of that. And we have a low spin now, one, two, three, Low spin, this is a relatively high gap, so we would prefer to um, electron pair versus populating a higher EG, but once this is filled up with six electrons, we have to. And lo and behold, we have one unpaired electron that gets us worth spin one half, all these plus or minus one halves up and down, so we're canceling each other out. So our, our S is one half, so two S plus one is, um, now S is one half plus one, equals two, that's why we have a doublet. <clears throat> what about TD? Remember TD is um, kind of flipped in a way with the Gs dropped, so you have the E at the bottom and the T2s at the top, and we have one, two, three, it's D3, and again, one unpaired electron, so that's um, spin one half, and so that gets us two S plus one, gets us a spin of two, again, it's a doublet. So that all checks out. Just good to do that as a sanity check. So let's write our ground state. Our ground state for octahedral, we call it doublet EG. Our ground state for um, tetrahedral, we just call it doublet E, drop the Gs. And now we just have to look for spin allowed transitions. So our first one here appears to be a, a doublet T1. We draw that in and we can write that. Spin allowed transitions, remember we're preserving the spin. So we gotta go from doublets to doublets. Those are the only ones that are allowed. We add Gs there for tetrahedral and we don't have Gs for octahedral. We went from doublet E to doublet T1. Next is gonna be a doublet T2. Just a little bit higher in energy than the doublet T1 transition, but these are gonna be two separate peaks. Might not be able to resolve them too well um, on your spectrometer. <clears throat> so they might just look like a little, you know, doublet sort of uh, with a shoulder or something like that. But we're going to get um, doublet EG going to doublet T2G. And here we get doublet E going to doublet T2. 
quartet, that's not going to be spin allowed. Quartet, that's not going to be spin allowed. But we have a quartet, uh, sorry, not a quartet. We have a doublet, A1. So that's coming down from here. Our electrons get excited, so we should think about it going up, which is why I draw the arrow that way. That's going to be a doublet EG to doublet A1G. Tetrahedral, same thing, but dropping the Gs because there's no inversion in tetrahedral. And then uh, looks like we also, this is a quartet, so that's not going to be spinning around. We also have a last very high energy one, which is the uh, doublet A2. And so this one's going to be so high in energy, you know, probably your spectrometer is going to be too far in the ultraviolet. Um, for most spectrometers, so you're not going to be able to see this. But this again would be doublet EG, that's our ground state, or octahedral going to doublet A to G. And then we have doublet E going to doublet <clears throat> A2. So for low spin D3 tetrahedral complexes or low spin D7 octahedral complexes, the D7 Tanabisiano diagram tells us that we expect four spin allowed transitions. So we should have four main peaks in our UV vis spectrum. However, um, you know, like I said earlier, some of these transitions might not actually appear on the spectrum because they're too high in energy, possibly this uh, one in black and this one in blue. But that's sort of an experimental thing. In theory, you're gonna have four main peaks due to the four spin allowed transitions.